Take a look at this map. What do these following places have in common? They have all been isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years, ever since they're connected as part of Gondwana. This makes for some very interesting life because they all share a similar evolutionary history. Think Gondwanan plants, marsupials, and a lot of birds. Australasia makes up just 6% of the world's land area, but over 10% of its different terrestrial ecoregions. Of the world's 14 biome types, some are not found here. There are no entire ecoregions of flooded grassland, boreal forest, or purely coniferous forests. For anyone not from here, such as myself, it's easy to just take a look at this map and pull from common stereotypes, thinking only desert, rainforest, and mountains. And technically, you wouldn't be wrong because those are definitely here, but you'd be missing so, so much more. So let's get on with it and explore just how varied the landscapes and life here can be. Tundra is not something you'd expect looking at this area, and it is not found on the mainland, but instead on the wet, cold and windy islands south of Australia and New Zealand. The Bounty, Auckland, Antipodes, Campbell and Macquarie Islands are far south enough that plant growth is stunted by long winters. Raining almost every single day, temperatures hovering between 3 to 9 degrees year round and average wind speeds of 40 kilometers an hour, they are harsh, rocky, isolated islands, some with some very intimidating cliffs. However, in places this is a strange version of the tundra we know, there are mega herbs rising from tussock grasses, small patches of low forests and sheltered areas, the world's only subantarctic orchids, and the world's most southerly tree ferns, all found here. The animal makeup includes breeding colonies of seals, huge colonies of penguins, and half the world's species of albatross. This seems typical of subantarctic islands until you also notice the small green parakeets scurrying along the ground, feeding on plants, seeds, and strangely, sometimes other birds. Next up, we have mangroves, the salt and freshwater forests that cover entire coastlines, with the New Guinea mangroves being some of the largest and most intact in the world. They're most expansive on the southern coast of New Guinea with meandering rivers, flood events, and fires, changing the conditions and creating a dynamic habitat for what lives here. The area of Bintuni Bay is the second largest continuous area of mangroves in the world, covering 3,000 square kilometers of land and 6,000 square kilometers into the ocean, up to 10 meters deep. Over 30 mangrove species have been found here, which is among the highest mangrove diversity in the world, with stands of trees up to 30 meters tall. The mangrove trees provide shelter for fish and crustaceans with their root systems, which calm the water and stabilizing the sediment. Feeding on the fish are many unique bird and reptile species, including red turkeys, beautiful parrots, large pigeons, crab-eating snakes, the aquatic mangrove monitors, and the apex predator of them all, the saltwater crocodiles. High up in the mountaintops are the montane grasslands, where the high elevation often leads to cool, wet, and windy conditions with lower oxygen levels. The highest peaks of the Australian Alps host the only montane grasslands on the continent. These exist above 1,600 meters of elevation, and they receive a quarter of the continent's rain. They also have the continent's harshest winters and support mixed grasslands, shrublands, or heath and bogs where corroboree frogs live, being the only frogs in the world that can produce their own poison. In contrast, New Guinea's central ranges are tropical and very high up. Punchak Jaya is the world's tallest island mountain, and this mountain range catches the shifting monsoons year-round, making it the world's wettest alpine environment. Surrounded by rainforests on all sides and found above 3 to 3.9 thousand meters, the mosslands, heathlands, and grasslands are incredibly isolated, even from the other peaks. Some of the species that these peaks support include alpine woolly rats, honey eaters, and some birds of paradise. By far, the largest span of montane grasslands in Australasia are on New Zealand's South Island, stretching 500 kilometers in length and reaching up to 3,700 meters in height. This is a large montane range. The tree line is roughly 1,200 meters in elevation, and of the 600 plant species, 90% are only found here. With southern beaches and podocarps found in the lower slopes and valleys, 
shrubs and grasses in the more open areas, and they even host the world's largest buttercup species. Some of the alpine species here include the incredibly curious kia and the very large wita. Tropical dry forests, which have seasonal rain due to monsoons, cover the west of New Caledonia in the mountain's rain shadow, being dense forests with canopies of 5 to 15 meters. The understories are thick with vines, and they have a very spectacular tree, which flowers directly from its trunk. The largest spans of dry forests are on the islands of southeastern Indonesia, but a combination of not being fire tolerant and human intervention, they are now more akin to savannas with patches of dry, moist, and montane forests remaining. These islands are dry forests because they're in the rain shadow of Australia, having dry seasons anywhere from two to nine months in length. There is a mix of Asian and Australian influences with its plants and animal species. One of the islands in particular, Komodo, is home to the famous Komodo dragon, the world's largest lizard species. Bird diversity is huge on these islands, with over 300 bird species, some very stunning and only found here, such as the Sumba hornbill and the glittering kingfisher. Temperate grasslands are found in the temperate zone in areas of moderate elevation and lower rain, such as the southeast of New Zealand in the rain shadow of the Southern Alps. Historically, this was likely forest, but with the arrival of humans around a thousand years ago, fires and the clearing of forests has changed this landscape to what it currently is, grasslands. There are small populations of very rare animals here, such as the black stilt and the grand skink. The largest stretch of temperate grasslands is in southeastern Australia, a transition area between the moist forests of the east and the deserts of the interior. So the further to the interior these grasslands go, the drier the region is. Most of the region receives four to 600 millimeters of annual rain, and the region turns especially green with seasonal wetlands appearing, which are important for many waterfowl species. Grassy open eucalyptus woodlands, large grassy fields, mulga shrublands, and riparian woodlands make up most of this region. The soils are richer to the south, where the grasses grow thicker, and the south is also hillier and rockier than the north, with some incredible formations, such as those found in Warrumbungle National Park. Unique marsupials, such as tiger quolls, bilbies, and rock wallabies are found here. Temperate broadleaf forests cover the southeastern edge of Australia, Tasmania, and the majority of New Zealand. New Zealand's forests feel like a different world due to the mountainous landscape and the isolation of the islands. From the immense Fordlands to the south, the extensive temperate rainforests of podocarp conifers and broadleaves, forests of southern beaches, and northern forests of the massive southern cowrie trees and these reach 45 meters into the sky. The understories of all are lush with tree ferns, shrubs, orchids, lichens, and mosses. Historically, the only mammals found in these forests were ground-feeding bat species such as the long-tailed bat, the island instead being ruled by birds, some reaching immense sizes such as the extinct moa. Today, the forest still supports some amazing wildlife such as the flightless kiwis, harlequin gecko, which is the southernmost gecko in the world, kaka, the kakapo, which is the largest parrot and is also flightless, breeding penguins, the ancient tuataras, and the takahe, which is the world's largest rail species. Many of the invertebrate species here are large. Wheatus, giant weevils, Nelson's cave spider, land snails, and leaf veined slugs. The largest extent of temperate broadleaf forests in Australasia are on Australia's east coast and Tasmania. From the cold but very wet rainforest of Tasmania to the subtropical temperate rainforest of eastern Australia, the forests are heavily dominated by eucalyptus trees and southern beaches such as the rose gum and kari, with canopies of 55 meters and some trees rising up to 80 meters in height. In the dense rainforest, the understory is rich with many fern, vine, and shrub species, while in the open eucalypt woodlands, the understory is dominated by grasses. Some of these forests are among the, if not the oldest forests in the world, with forests surviving since they were part of Gondwana back in the Jurassic. The Wallamai pine is a good example of this, 
found northwest of Sydney. It's often called the living fossil, believed to have existed for over 200 million years. Another very unique plant species is the giant pandani, reaching up to 12 meters in height in Tasmania. Forests are loud with the calls of birds such as lyre birds and gang gang cockatoes, koalas, the Tasmanian devil, bandicoots, coals, wombats, platypus, and kangaroo species make up some of the mammal assembly, while velvet worms, Tasmanian giant freshwater crayfish, and giant earthworms are some of the unique and giant invertebrates. Mediterranean forests are found in the south and southwest of Australia. They cover over 10% of the continent and make up a total of 25% of the world's Mediterranean biome. These ecoregions are interspersed with broadleaf forests, deserts, and savannas, but all the areas have a Mediterranean climate with hot, dry summers and cool, wet winters ranging from rainforest-esque to semi-arid. On the extreme southwest, we have the forests of the tallest trees in Australia, the 90-meter-tall Kari eucalyptus with a thick shrub understory. Then moving east, we have the tall open Jara forests, open Coolgarda woodlands of salmon gums, then molly shrublands on the central south, and finally open savanna-like sclerophyll woodlands to the southeast. Along the coast, heathlands of prickly thickets occur. The molly shrublands in particular cover a majority of Australia's Mediterranean zone, with stems growing from bulbs that help with storing water and recovering from the regular fires of the dry seasons. The western portion of this region has some very unique species due to the isolation from deserts, including the numbat, the adorable quokka, the western quoll, Carnaby's black cockatoo, the death adder, honey possums, the iconic kookaburra, wombats, echidnas, and emus. Reptile diversity is very high, with many snake and skink species in particular. Tropical broadleaf forests are found in the northeast of Australia, Indonesia, New Guinea, and its surrounding islands. I've covered Queensland's tropical forests on Australia's mainland extensively here in this previous video, but they are among the world's oldest tropical rainforests, with thick forests similar to those of New Guinea, full of bird and marsupial species. New Guinea and its surrounding islands are diverse, being the second largest island in the world with lowland rainforests, cloud rainforests, flooded forests, montane rainforests, and swamp woodlands of sago palms. New Guinea's central range has many mountains over 4,000 meters in height, essentially splitting the island in half. Being so mountainous, areas that are only kilometers away on a map are actually isolated from each other, creating countless pockets of different species. These rainforests are also very wet, with 1,500 to 6,000 millimeters of annual precipitation, having very high humidity and consistent hot weather. For an island covering 0.5% of the Earth's surface, it has 5 to 10% of its species. The vegetation is mega diverse, and the canopies are high, on average 40 meters overhead with fig, tropical hardwoods, gymnosperms, eucalypt, and conifer trees. There's cashew trees, screw palms, and the New Guinea oak to name a, just a fraction of the species. As elevation increases, the forests transition into more of beech, podocarp conifers, and myrtles. And the understory of these montane rainforests thicken with smaller trees and epiphytes. This is a worldwide bird hotspot. Cassowaries, paradise kingfishers, almost every single bird of paradise, bowerbirds, fruit doves, and the plague doctor like white streaked friar bird. Not having native primates, the 200 plus mammal species are heavily represented by possums and tree kangaroos in the trees, with bats and flying foxes flying overhead, while patamelons, echidnas, bandicoots, and native rats scurry along the forest floor. However, one unique spot is on Sulawesi. Asian and Australian influences are highest among mammals, with civets, macaws, couscous, tarsiers, anoa, and the barbarusa coexisting. There are countless amphibian and reptile species, over 300 frogs, 200 lizards, 100 snakes, 7 turtles, and 2 crocodiles. And surprise surprise, this is also an invertebrate hotspot. They have the world's largest bee species with Wallace's giant bee and countless butterflies. On some of the smaller surrounding islands such as New Caledonia, 
which is a fragment of Gondwana being isolated for 55 million years, has many endemic trees, the largest fern species, a tool using crow, the largest pigeon, the largest gecko, and the ground dwelling kegu. Tropical grasslands cover almost the entirety of the northern half of Australia, or 30% of the entire continent, and a small portion on the south of New Guinea. The trans fly savanna and grasslands is the driest and flattest area of all of New Guinea. Magpie geese, pig nosed turtles, and dusky padmelons are important animals here. Similar, but drier, is northern Australia. Covering such a large area, there is diversity in the landscapes and regions, ranging from volcanic highlands, expansive rolling plains, large plateaus, sandstone massifs, and floodplain mosaics. The most common habitats are eucalypt open forests, savannas in the floodplains, iron bark woodlands, small pockets of rainforest, open Mitchell grasslands, and riparian red gum forests. The trees of the savannas tend to be taller and have more canopy cover further to the north. There are many cave systems found in both the east and the west, such as the Chilago Minguna caves, and in some places under the trees there are grasses that reach up to two and a half meters high, such as in Arnhem Land. This area supports so many bird species, especially the migratory ones when the rainy season occurs. Common animals include kangaroos, possums, tree frogs, dunarts, and the large Spencer's monitor. The deserts of Australia are the single largest biome in this realm. Over one third of the entire region is hot and arid, and these deserts make up one eighth of the world's total desert, often referred to as the outback. The landscape ranges from rolling hills spotted with low acacia shrubs, orange dune fields with the largest reaching 40 meters in height, flat gravel plains covered in thin desert grasses, open mulga grasslands in the least dry regions, rocky areas of spinifex grasses, deep red canyons with isolated palm tree populations in the middle of the desert, empty salt flats that become massive lakes when there's rain, and barren gibber plains. Temperatures can reach up to 50 Celsius in the summers in some areas, and the entire area is dry. But when the rare rains occur, the landscape will often change with seasonal lakes forming and the landscape flowering and turning green for a short while. Much of the animals are nocturnal or burrow to escape the heat. Large animals include emus, red kangaroos, dingoes, and the parenta. The smaller include the iconic blue-tongued skink, thorny devil, the southern marsupial mole, the coltar, desert tree frogs, night parrot, and the mallee fowl. The largest single ecoregion here, and in Australia as a whole, is the great sandy Tanami desert, which consists of a few similar smaller deserts and covers 10% of Australia. This area has the iconic Uluru, which rises 350 meters out of the flat plain, glowing red in the sunsets. And in the western deserts, you'll find mysterious fairy circles, which are barren circles 2 to 12 meters in diameter, ringed by vegetation, and as of yet, no one is exactly sure what their origin is. One of the reasons I, I make these videos and do the research for these is simply to learn as much about the world as I can and its ecosystems and animals, and hopefully teach a couple other people the same thing. With this, looking at this map, I had no idea how much of Australia was savanna, or how large its Mediterranean range was, or even how far north and inland its temperate forests went. Australasia truly is a unique bird and marsupial dominated land. Remnants of ancient times exist with its ancient plant and animal species, with the Gondwanan heritage going far back to 200 million years ago. And it makes it very unique and almost seem alien to anyone who hasn't been there, like me, yet. I briefly covered a lot of different areas in this video and if there's any area in particular or areas, let me know in the comments below and maybe I can do a deeper dive on it. Thank you for watching and until next time.